Let's say you want to organize a freestyle battle tournament just like Furpok Freestyle, Dragon's Dojo, Floor Wars, Battle Zoo, you name it. You know, a simple 16 person single elimination bracket. Okay, I have two very important questions that you should be thinking about. How many judges are you going to be using? And what type of voting system are these judges using? The answer to these questions depends on what type of event you'd like to run. Do you want to have a lot of high stakes tiebreakers happening in your bracket? Or are you limited on time for the event? Are you limited on the number of dancers you can recruit as judges? Or do you want as many judges as possible to minimize the effects of biased votes? And is having four judges okay for battles? Well, let me just spoil the video and tell you the answers. If you never want ties happening, use an odd number of judges that use left-right voting. If you want to maximize the possibility of ties occurring, use three judges that use left-right tie voting. If you intend on using as many judges as possible to minimize the effects of biased voting, just realize that ties are less likely to happen with more judges. And if you want to use four judges, or any even number of judges, just go for it. The caveat is, is just make sure you have a tiebreaker judge on standby. That's it. Video over. You can go home now. What, you don't believe me? Alright, let me show you the maths. You may or may not know this, but I am a physicist and had to suffer through learning statistical mechanics. It's a type of physics you get when there's a large number of particles involved in your system. The fundamental principle is that all possible configurations are equally probable. Okay, what do I mean by that, and how does this apply to dance battles? Well, let's say you have three judges using left-right tie voting. There are 27 different voting configurations that are possible with the setup. And we're just going to say that they're all equally probable of showing up. So how does this help us? Well, we can get the probability of an outcome just by counting the number of configurations yielding that outcome divided by the total number of possible configurations. In this case, there are 10 configurations where the dancer on the left is the winner, 10 configurations where the dancer on the right is the winner, and 7 configurations where the outcome is a tie. Dividing each of these by 27 will give probabilities of 37% of the left winning, 37% of the right winning, and 26% of it ending in a tie. Now I know what you're thinking. Is it even valid to assume all voting configurations are equally probable? Well, given a large number of battles, yeah. What counts as a large enough number of battles? That's a conversation for later. This stat back technique is good enough as a starting point for now. Now I have a question for you. Do you remember Pascal's Triangle? You know, that cool little math trick you do by getting the numbers in the lower rows by adding up the numbers in the upper rows? Well, we can use this to count up the number of configurations for a vote, given the number of judges present and the voting system that they're using. The Pascal's Triangle that you know and love is good enough for left-right voting, and the number of rows corresponds to the number of judges present in each vote. If we want to calculate the number of configurations where left is the winner, we just add up all the row entries that are on the left side of the triangle. Likewise, we add up all the row entries that are on the right side of the triangle to get the number of configurations where right is the winner. And of course, the number of middle entries in the triangle are the number of times the outcome is a tie. To get the total number of configurations, just add up all the entries in a row. So now we can calculate the probabilities of each outcome. Here's a graph that plots the probability of each outcome where the horizontal axis is the number of judges that are involved, and they're only using left-right voting. Red is when the dancer on the right wins, blue is when the dancer on the left wins, and purple is when it's a tie. Unsurprisingly, it's an even 50-50 split between left and right winning when there's an odd number of judges involved. The only times it's possible for a tie to happen is when there's an even number of judges. Alright, what about left-right tie voting? Well, we can make our own Pascal's triangle for this. Instead of adding two numbers to get the next row's entries, we can add three. We now have a triangle that gets the configurations for left-right tie voting, and we can calculate the probabilities the same way as before. So here's a graph that plots the probability of each outcome just like before, with the number of judges as the horizontal axis. The obvious thing is that ties are now possible given any number of judges, not just the even numbers like last time. Something that's a little bit more pronounced this time is that the tie percent goes down as the number of judges increases. This is because the total number of possible configurations goes up way faster than the number of tie configurations that are possible when you increase judges. This does happen with the left-right voting case as well, I just didn't want to mention it at the time. Well, there you have it. If you want to maximize the possibilities of ties happening in your bracket, then use three judges with left-right tie voting. If you don't want ties happening as often, but are still possible, 
then use more than three judges with that same voting scheme. And if I may show a little bit of subjective opinion, tiebreakers are really interesting. They're surprises, they really raise the stakes. Some of the best battles that we've seen over the past year were tiebreakers. The whole point of freestyle dance tournaments is that it's unscripted entertainment. So why not add a little bit of chaos just to make things interesting? But I want to take a moment to dispel a myth that's in the dance community. Having four judges does not mean that ties are more likely to occur. It depends on the voting system that's used. With left-right tie voting, ties are less likely to happen with four judges compared to three. There's nothing wrong with having four judges, just make sure you have an MC that's a dancer and is qualified to stand in as a fifth judge on the rare tiebreakers that occur. Just whatever you do, do not remove a judge in the middle of your event just to make an odd number. Anyway, this is just a starting point. There's quite a few topics I plan on covering that go beyond the post-con report videos that I've been making. Topics that I think event coordinators should be thinking about when they plan on organizing dancer events at cons. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see ya in the next video.